What's up guys, it's John from ARTV. First off, I gotta say a huge thank you because I'm in such a great mood. Why, you might ask? Well, not only is it my 23rd birthday, the day that I'm filming this video, but, drum roll please, I just hit 10,000 subscribers here on this channel. So, of course, thank you to everyone who watches my videos, subscribes to my channel. I genuinely appreciate you and I thank you, thank you for sticking with my content over the years. Today is the day that I dropped my top 15 albums of 2014, and it's hard to believe that this year is almost a thing of the past. Of course, I say that pretty much every year, so let's go ahead and get to it, John. Come on. Keep in mind that this is all my list, not your list, and it's all my opinion, not your opinion. So I don't want to see any comments that start like, where the hell is the war on drugs? Why isn't Perfume Genius on this list? This guy's an idiot. You type of people, you know exactly who you are. You're the ones that I love banning from the channel. You might also be surprised that some of my highest rated albums of the year do not appear on this list, and some of the ones that got lower scores work their way up the ranks. That's just how it goes. Albums sit differently with you through the years, through the months, etc. Some grow on you, and some kind of fade off into the black. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start off the list with number 15. Gerard Way unleashes his inner distortion all over his debut LP, Hesitant Alien, and the results were hard to deny. While Way does seem much happier and, I guess, enthusiastic here on this LP, I don't think he loses that spunk and that attitude that made him one of the most charismatic frontmen of the early to mid-2000s with My Chemical Romance. Cuts like Action Cat show off a noisy rock style that succeeds in keeping the vocals and the guitars kind of at similar levels without totally drowning out the lyrics or the feeling in the song at all. You've got those styled songs, and then you've got more heartfelt, in-touch songs with great lyrics and kind of an 80s nostalgia feel about them. And Drugstore Perfume is a prime example of when that side of the album works. The album rarely gets off track, which makes for a smooth listen with a lot of cuts that you can really just sink your teeth into. I was honestly surprised at how much I ended up loving the new offering from the New York-based band Interpol. Their last album, which was a self-titled effort, didn't have much of a shelf life to it because there wasn't that much interesting content there in the first place, to be blunt. El Pinter finds the group one member short, but sounding the strongest that they have honestly since I feel like 2002's debut album Turn On The Bright Lights. Guitarist Daniel Kessler hits us with some slick and pounding riffs that have a very unique vibe about them. He's really good at kind of those reverb-laden performances, slicing their way through these highlights such as Twice as Hard and the track My Desire, which is my personal favorite and appeared on my top 50 songs of 2014 list. I think that it helps that Paul Banks, the lead singer of this band, feels much more invested this time around, much more earnest with his vocal performances, if you will, all throughout this record. And I just gotta say congratulations to Interpol because it's nice to have you back in the game and back performing at your best. I checked out this album after hearing a few of my viewers recommend it and like speak very highly of it and sure, I had heard a few of her songs in the past, but I didn't really remember any of them striking me as something I absolutely had to hear more of. The self-titled record absolutely begs to differ, and I gotta say, hands down, one of the most surprising LPs of the year. It's not that St. Vincent has ditched the whole art rock label, but rather she's incorporated that mood into her most accessible material to date. There's a light and reflective mood on highlights like I Prefer Your Love and the truly spectacular Prince Johnny, while synthesizers, guitars, and a more upbeat attitude carry the gems like the brooding and venomous Rattlesnake and the single Birth in Reverse. To everyone who feels like the modern pop punk scene is dying, you clearly have not heard of a band called Bayside. They've been Warp Tour mainstays for nearly a decade now and have time and time again put out good albums that make the most of each band member's specific talents. However, Cult rose above even their own standards of excellence and presents itself as a compelling piece of art with big drum fills, explosive guitar solos, and a balance of angst-written vocals on tracks like Pigsty and the more emotionally in check jams like Transitive Property. Through and through, this is an album full of entertaining music that packs a punch with a good dose of staying power as well. And it's been on rotation the majority of 2014 for me.
Originally released in 2013, this album was re-released this year after Nothing More, one of the most underrated rock bands out there right now, signed with 117 Music. Upon hearing the single This Is The Time, Ballast, I knew immediately that I had to hear more music from these guys. What I did not expect whenever I went to check out this record is an hour-long, hard-hitting rock record full of lyrics that attack the overprivileged on tracks like The Matthew Effect, some hard-hitting power ballads, and even some tracks that incorporate glitchy electronics on some of the reprise style tracks. There's an undeniable connectivity in these songs, starting with the album's opener, Ocean Floor, which kind of climaxes straight into This Is The Time perfectly. Lyrically, this band gets all the awards for just daring to be different and not succumbing to the dumb stereotypes of modern rock music and what people want to hear on the radio. They speak of not falling in line with the rest of the world on Mr. MTV, questioning the way we conduct ourselves on Ballast This Is The Time, and tackle anything and everything on the monster of a track God Went North in Friendly Fire. If you're looking for a great hard rock record with a lot of depth in it, then nothing more is the way to go. You wouldn't exactly expect a breakup record to be something that grips you so tightly, but Ghost Stories definitely proved to have life beyond death. Life beyond the death of a relationship, that is. Chris Martin explores the depths of depression on somber slices like Oceans and Always in My Head, without forgetting to include those sparks of life and magic and a sky full of stars. This record is perfect for driving, thinking, and reflecting, and those are three things that I've done a whole lot of this year. Grab yourself a seat by the ocean because the tropical vibes are flowing big time on the long-awaited and aptly titled sophomore release from the now solo artist LaRue. Five years is a long time for a pop artist to drop off the radar, but there was still a rather large fan base waiting for her whenever she got back and dropped her excellent track Let Me Down Gently last spring. She certainly took a risk by incorporating more live instrumentation this time around with a totally different goal in mind. It worked oh so well though and I've gotta give it to her. From the upbeat and downright chipper Kiss and Not Tell to the epic seven minute banger Silent Partner. I'll say this, well done, Miss Jackson. Walk the Moon barely made the cut for this year's list, launching an official stream of their album the last week of November. If you guys are not familiar, I don't include anything released after December 1st, so they, play, they played it close this year. This record has so much hook and appeal to it that it's impossible for me to ignore it. It's fun, upbeat, dance rock music with spunk-laced lyrics and attitude coming from vocalist Nick Petrica. They splatter their trademark sound all over the opener different colors and continue to take us through a journey through the highs of the endlessly catchy shut up and dance to the lows of down in the dumps. It's ego driven at times, sure, but it doesn't appear to take itself too seriously and they've got more than enough charm to make this thing work in spectacular fashion. Run the Jewels have blown my mind, showing me that I can truly fall in love with a modern hip hop record. Killer Mike and LP are the two masterminds behind this thing, the two MCs that make up the duo, merging hard-hitting beats and loops with the hard verbal attacks and truly impressive wordplay. Killer Mike is my favorite of the duo, but both men are truly talented at what they do. The flow from track to track is impeccable, and the run times in this thing are perfect in my book. So many hip-hop records feel the need to be like super long, like 20 tracks long, and tons of features, and long, dull instrumental interludes thrown in all over the place, among other cliches that you can find on really most modern hip-hop releases it seems. This record does none of those things. Whenever the guests do show up, they make them count. Point in case, Zack De La Roca of Rage Against the Machine fame appearing on the track Close Your Eyes and Count to Fuck. The duo tackles everything from personal issues and relationships to politics and it all adds up to the most exciting hip-hop release of 2014. Mellow out and relax with Beck as he sails through a dream world of love, loss, and inspirations that he finds in day-to-day -day life. It's a simple but graceful journey that demands to be taken by anyone willing to listen. Once you do, it'll be easy to see why I love this album so much, all the way from Cycle to Waking Light, the latter of those being my favorite on this project. 
Linkin Park hit back hard after a few experimental records that were never bad by any means, but still seemed to be missing a certain spark that was found in their first two releases. I might not hold the same level of hype for The Hunting Party that I did whenever I initially reviewed it, but there's no denying how great this album is. They get into the strong rock groove all throughout this thing, led by the cuts like All For Nothing featuring Helmet's Paige Hamilton, and of course Mark the Graves and The Haunting Closer A Line In The Sand. The guitars are alive again again and the electronics take the back seat this time around as Linkin Park strive to take hard rock back to the modern world. The crossover from country to pop was coming. We could all see that. But Taylor Swift's 80 synth pop record is way more fun than I expected and dare I say it's her best work to date. I've always been a fan of Taylor Swift. She's a talented songwriter who yes, does write a lot of songs about guys because she goes through a lot of relationships. So do you. I bet you have too. Does it really matter where the inspiration comes from when we get incredible songs like Out of the Woods? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm still a little bit cold-shouldered towards the ill-fitting lead single Shake It All, but really other than that, there's not a moment on here that I do not cherish. Oh, you're into ballads? Try out the track Clean. More bubblegum pop with a little bit of a kick to it? Eh, eh, bad blood, it's right there for you. And of course I could continue, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna sound like a monotonous robot. What's 10 years whenever you're death from above 1979? Clearly nothing as these dudes breeze through these bass-led dance punk jams that sound like they could do it in their sleep. These guys never miss a single beat, nor do they allow room for throwaway songs. Their lyrics are laced with fire as they match the intensity of the instrumentals, which are filled with these hammering drum rhythms and skillful bass lines, my personal favorite being Right on Frankenstein with some great transitions, absolutely phenomenal instrumentation on that track in particular. Trainwreck 1979 is another favorite of mine. The Physical World, which is the title track from this LP, just gets weird and it's awesome. We're almost there. Number two, Royal Blood are the most exciting new band out there in the world of rock and roll. I fell in love on my first listen with the track Out of the Black, which really just commands the listener's attention. It really just grabs you by the neck and like slams you to the ground and you're like, whoa, I am way too invested in this track way too quickly, but somehow I'm okay with it. I've got a gun for my mouth and a bullet with your name on it. Singer Mike Kerr cries on this track. Hard Rock meets up with some blues influences on cuts like Loose Change and Ten Ton Skeleton. And then you've got the bombastic Figure It Out, which just explodes in its final act with a fury of bass guitar, drums, all coming together into this huge climax. And then the song just finishes and you're just like, Oh, I'm getting worked up just thinking about it. Whew. I gotta go listen. Even Da Vinci couldn't paint my reaction whenever I realized that this was my album of the year. Weezer's comeback record has everything. Catchy hooks for days, extremely skillful songwriting, and the simplicity that helped this band achieve such huge success in the first place. The more I hear this record, the more I appreciate every little in and out, every little nuance, every little trick in the book, everything that this record has to offer. Things that initially did not sit well with me, like the whistling and Da Vinci and the lyrical content and I've had it up to here, are now charming and welcome to me. Fans that are craving for those older stylings of Weezer are definitely going to find true happy and tracks like Ain't Got Nobody and of course Go Away featuring Best Coast's Bethany Cosentino, while listeners craving something a little bit more adventurous will definitely love some of the final tracks like Foolish Father and of course the very adventurous Future Scope trilogy. The new Weezer record is one of the most well-rounded and versatile records I've heard in the past few years and has my undying seal of approval and is the ARTV album of the year. I think that's it. I think take six is going to be the one. Make sure to smash the like button on this video guys to let me know that you enjoyed this list. The lists are definitely the most, ooh, sometimes a little bit frustrating to get filmed and edited and everything, but once a project comes together, yeah, I, I love it, you know, and love seeing you guys' reaction as well. Thank you so much for the support all throughout 2014 and over the past five years right here on this channel. Of course, if you'd like to see any of my past lists that I've done for the 2013, 20. 12, 2011, whatever you want to see. It's linked in the description down below along with my Facebook and Twitter. Of course, pick yourself up a t-shirt if you'd like or consider donating to the channel to really help these videos keep coming out. I'm going to be doing throwback reviews the last week of December. I'm going to be doing three of those and then on the fourth day I've got a special video for you. It's going to be a review orgy of albums that I missed in 2014. 
maybe five or ten that I didn't get to cover throughout the year and I want to go into at least a little bit more detail on as you guys have been requesting them. Uh, included in that list, Madden Brothers, nothing more, and the rest you can just stay tuned for. Thank you so much for watching the video. Consider going down below, pick yourself up a t-shirt, and I will see you very soon right here on ARTV.